And prove it, peeps. Welcome to the week. Welcome to today's episode. I have an amazing guest here with you today. The one, the only Tara Robertson. Found Tara on LinkedIn. And after scouring her posts for hours, I said, must know, must talk to her. So here is how Tara Robertson is improving it. Tara is an intersectional feminist who uses data and research to advocate for equality and inclusion. She brings nearly 15 years experience leading change in open source technology communities and corporate spaces, including three years leading diversity and inclusion at Mozilla. She now partners as a consultant with technology, engineering, and media leaders to help drive systemic change. Now, her work has been included in Harvard Business Review, Forbes, and other publications, so honored to have her on the show. So today's show is so special. She is going to give us three things that we can do as people leaders to help our transgender employees create a safe space and feel supported. This is Pride Month and I love this topic so much. I have a very, very, very big heart for the LGBTQIA community, as well as the transgender community. And it is my hope that we can create, if not now, a place where future generations who are dealing with this type of unsupportiveness, for lack of a better word, help them to create a space where they feel welcome and everybody feels like they belong and they feel seen, heard, and valued. So, We're going to hear three best practices for how to allow your transgender employees to feel supported. We're going to talk about what to stop and start doing as a people leader to create a safe space for transgendered employees. And we also got some fantastic resources that Tara has been so gracious to give us. So if you want to learn more about gender and how to be better equipped in these conversations, you can have those as a resource for you. Without further ado, let's get to improving it with Tara Robertson. Are you a leader or change maker inside of your business, organization, or corporation? Are you looking for new, innovative ways to drive morale through the roof? Are you looking for fun and exciting icebreakers, team building exercises, and activities that will foster team growth, friendships, loyalty, and completely transform your organization from the inside out? Have you been searching for a fun and unique way to create change instead of this? same old dry, boring leadership books and icebreakers that aren't actually working. Hi, I'm Erin Deal, business improv edutainer, fail fluencer, and professional zombie who is ready to help you improve it. My mission in life is to help you develop teams and leaders through play, improv, and experiential learning. In this podcast, we will deep dive into professional development, team building, effective communication, networking, presentation skills, leadership training, how to think more quickly on your feet, and everything in between. We have helped everyone from Fortune 500 companies to small mom and pop shops transform their business, their leadership, and their people through play. So grab your chicken hat. We are about to have some fun. Welcome to Improve It, the podcast. Okay, Tara, welcome to the Improve It podcast. So happy to have you here today. So first of all, you look fantastic. We have we have lipstick on. We have you have lipstick on. I have lip gloss on, which is a rarity for me. Um, and I would love for you to introduce yourself to the show, to the Improve It peeps with five fun facts about yourself. And I got a little ditty that goes with it. Okay, so it goes like this. Five facts, five facts, five facts, five facts, five facts. Tell us five things about Tara that we couldn't know from your resume, from your LinkedIn profile, from your bio. What are fun five things about you? Um, I have a dog named Kinoko. It's Japanese for mushroom because he's a fun guy. Oh, yes. Okay. One. Two. It's on, it's on my resume, but I used to be an academic librarian. And now I do DEI work with uh, mostly tech leaders. Yes. Okay. Three. I've lived in a bunch of different countries. So I've lived in Canada, New Zealand, Australia, Scotland, Japan. 
I'm somewhere else. What? Okay. Number four. Number four. Number four, number four, number four. Um, during the pandemic, I've been playing a lot of video games. So I play Fortnite quite a bit, which I think is mostly a kid's game. Yes. Okay. And number five. Five. I'm looking right in front of me and I see my Peloton and I've other my other pandemic thing is I've been biking fast nowhere on this stationary bike. Yes. Okay. Who Who's your favorite Peloton instructor? Gotta ask. Oh, I love a lot of the women. So Robin, I love Tunde, I love Jess King. She's so weird and wonderful. What about you? The same. I love Tunde. I love Robin. I'm like, I am a lot. I'm boo squad for Cody. I love Cody. Those are my main go-tos. Oh, Olivia. I also like Olivia. And oh my God, Allie Love. How can you forget Allie Love? I love Allie Love. Oh, Oh, Sundays of Love like was one of the best things. Yeah, it was a real pandemic highlight for me. Uh, I know we, I just got one. My husband, and I just got one in January. So I'm kind of new, but it's been so fun. And also what is your favorite country that you lived in? That's crazy. You know, all of them, like what I like about living somewhere is you get to see the daily life of a place. Like I'm interested in what's in the grocery store, what the post office looks like, what public transit's like, what the public library is like, those kinds of things. So living somewhere, I get to to really experience that. I get to know some of my neighbors, that kind of thing. Um, but Vancouver is really my home now. So the mountains and the ocean, like they really hold me. It's a really special place. Mm, I feel that too. I feel that too. I don't have mountains, but I have ocean. And that is why I moved in the pandemic to Charleston because I needed to be, water is just like a grounding thing for me. It's actually very calming where I know some people are like, oh, the waves are up and down. And I'm like, no, that is soothing for me. So I love that for us, Tara. Okay. So can we do this? I love to set an intention at the top of the show. What's one word that you want to get out of today's show? We're talking all about transgendered employees in the workplace, how to support them. What is one word you want to get out of today's show? Hmm. I think that word is respect. Yeah. Yeah. Love that. All right. We're going to hold that. We're going to hold that space and we're going to move into this topic because I found you on LinkedIn. I love your posts. I love your point of view. And one of my favorite things that I found when researching you for the show was on your LinkedIn profile. And so you have your list of companies and you list one of your companies as human. And the title is taking a break. And you said, I took an intentional break during the pandemic to rest and reflect. I took courses that I was interested in. I read books. I went on long dog walks in nature and worked with a coach to get clear on my purpose. And I got to say, first of all, yes, so much to that. I was a recruiter prior to building and prove it. Um, and to see this on a resume, that was a long time ago, that was eight years ago, would have been shocking. But right now I'm looking at it and I'm just clapping. I'm like, yes, clapping, screaming, more of this, yes. So let me ask you this. How impactful was that time of rest for you in shaping where you are today in your career? That's a really good question. So when I left my last company, I thought, oh, I'm going to take like a month break. That's going to be like a, a really ridiculous amount of time. And then I'm going to start looking for a job again. And I stopped and I was like, wow, like I am bone tired. I am beyond exhausted. Like I need to take a pause. And fortunately, like that was possible for me. But in thinking and getting clear with my values with my coach, it was like, I'm not sure the job that really aligns with what I want to do and like what I'm here to do actually exists. Yeah. So that's what um, helped me start my own consulting company. And the biggest thing for me on that was like getting over my own fear. Like everyone in my family is an employee. Like there's not a lot of entrepreneurs in my family. So it's like, Ooh, can I really do this? Yeah. And yeah. it's, I like, I had the greatest call this morning with a, a client who is in South Africa. I work with smart people who are, wanting to see the same change that I do in the world. Um, I get to partner with really cool, smart women, mostly. Um, and I love it. 
And I also have the time to have the the life that I want. So I can go for a dog walk um, with my wife in the forest. And so I have time to read the book that I want. So yeah, that pause was really important and to set my career off in a totally different direction. I love that. It's so vulnerable, so scary, but so rewarding at the same time. And it feels like you're in alignment with your assignment, you know? So (laughs) kudos to you. Kudos to you. So All right. So again, going back to me being a scavenger, I was like Nancy Drew. I was just going through your LinkedIn and I noticed in a post that you wrote, and this actually happened. Well, I'm going to say of the post and then I'm going to say a relevant event. So you said that you were supposed to speak at an event on DEI and that you lost your voice. And the person leading the event said it's an opportunity to model the idea that the humanity of others takes precedence over the work. So, and you even said that this this event leader said it took it a step further to post about how exciting it, important mental health is. I got to say that when I read that, that moved me so much. And as a person whose voice is their instrument, like this is literally how I do work. I have far too often pushed through. And even before you and I were supposed to record this last week, you also reached out to me. You weren't feeling well. I was sick. I was the one that was like, no, Aaron, tip, 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 podcast. You can't reschedule with Tara. She's busy. So how, my question is all of this to say, how important is your mental health, especially in the work that you do? How How is taking care of your your mental health so important so that you can have your kettle full and pour that into others' cups? That's such a good question. I'm thinking like, hmm, like the uh, the times, like I'm, memories are flashing back when I didn't do a great job of taking care of my mental health and my career or my boundaries were kind of messy and I, the, the cup was empty and I was still pouring from it. It was like this magic cup. It's like, where is this coming from? Yeah. And like, it's like, depleting me on some other level. Um, I think right now, especially partnering with leaders, like I need to be really grounded, um, really fully in my power to support them and thinking like of the bold directions that they're taking their organizations. And if both of us like aren't well resourced, we're not able to move in really solid ways. Um, and you were like reflecting that back about not being able to do that talk. Like, and you were so gracious with me as well. Also my voice, like I literally had no voice. It was a side effect after having COVID and there, there's something really humbling about that. Even if you're, cause I did have that story. Oh, like this is a very important podcast. Erin's very organized and she's going to think, Oh, she's so flaky. And it's like, literally I had no voice. Yeah. So there wasn't anything else to do. And to say, hey, I'm I'm really sorry, but I need to I need to reschedule. And you you were so gracious. Oh my gosh! Well, and I was same says because I was like, wow, you give me you gave me a wake up call. Of like, Erin, you need to just I, this is what I preach all the time is make sure your kettle's full. So you and I didn't even take my own advice. I was like, gonna do this, and I'm pretty. I did not test positive for COVID, but I'm pretty sure I had the vid because I had all the symptoms last week or two weeks ago at this point. And it was just, um, I kept pushing and pushing and pushing. And finally, I just let myself kind of collapse for a few days. And I learned so much in that moment. And I realized like all the symptoms I had, I I realized they were so metaphorical, like the chills I was experiencing. Erin, you need to chill. You need to chill. The, you know, sweat, you know, I was having, I was like, stop sweating that small stuff. You know, the cough was like, you know, I'm all about, I'm a little spiritual and it was like the throat chakra. And it was about, I had something that I needed to clear and there was, I had some energy stored that I needed to get out. And it was just sort of a, a, re, a, reawa- a reawakening as my two-year-old might say. <laughs> um, but it was a reawakening for me. Cause I was just like, I really keep going when I should not. And so you were actually inspirational to me. So thank you for that. I loved it. Can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah, please. So like next time when you're feeling run down or I hope you don't get COVID. Yeah. 
the first time, the next time. But the next time you're feeling run down, like what kind of grace can you extend yourself? What might that look like? Tara, I love that. Thank you for that. I I think it's just a matter of slowing down, taking things off my plate that I don't need and just saying, you know what, I give, I give, I could give grace to other people. I need to give it to myself. And that's such a great question. My mother listens to this show. She's been on the show and she's always like, what would you tell your audience? And I'm like, good point, mom. So I also realized through that process, a little self-reflection that I need to give more space in every day to calm, to, mm-hmm. to allow that to, you know, I don't have to go until bedtime. I need to give my space, myself space in the evenings to release the day. And I don't do that. And so I'm really trying to allow that space daily so it doesn't catch up to me at once. But I like, I like, you're inspirational with that. Okay. You're giving me that, you're giving me that to put in my own little tool belt here, Tara. So thank you. Future Erin, as you're listening to this recording, cancel the thing. Yeah. Make a cup of tea. Yeah. Do what you need to do for yourself. It's going to be okay. God, I love that. Coming back to episode 112 of the show, time after time. Hey, me. It's me. Um, (laughs) Hey, girl, you need to stop. Okay. So (laughs) hard turn, hard turn right now because. I want to I want to talk about this month that this episode is going to air is Pride Month, which I think we always celebrate. Oh, we should celebrate year long. I love that we give it a month. But one of the topics that I found so interesting, what actually led me to you, was knowing that you've been active on creating policies within organizations to help transgendered employees feel more inclusive. So can you give us just a little background on how you got started, how this transpired? Yeah. So this work started um, when I was at Mozilla. But actually, if I go further back, like when I was 19, my girlfriend at the time transitioned and is a man and is a gay man who lives in Osaka, Japan now. Um, So I've been close to the trans community for a long time. And... As a queer woman, I have quite a lot of rights in society now. Um, when I was growing up, um, same-sex marriage wasn't legal. So it's, it's kind of wild that like I'm living my best life that I couldn't have even imagined for myself. Like I'm married to an amazing woman. Um, we have a really great, loving, stable, adventurous life together. Like I, I feel so lucky and so blessed. And I, th- I think when... Um, within the queer community or gay and lesbian community more broadly. Like we, we do have a lot of human rights that we've fought for and trans people are more on the edge of getting and keeping those human rights. Um, so when I was in house at Mozilla, one of the things that I thought, because there are, there are quite a few out trans women as well as people who are transitioning to come out as trans and non-binary it's like, what could I do to support them to have an easier time of it? And being an open source company, I was like, aha, the answer is documentation. So just like, where would you need to go? Who do you need to talk to? And all these different systems that we've got, the HR system, the IT systems, the systems our facilities people have, the system the travel team uses, like, there's a lot of systems. Like, yeah. what if I just documented where you would need to update your name and gender marker? Yes. And even getting a list of all those places was like, it was no small feat. The other thing that happened is I was talking to different departments about like, what would the process be? Let's document that. I was hearing that like the IT help desk really wanted to make sure that everyone was getting awesome service. And some of them had questions about like, what's a respectful way to interact with trans and non-binary staff? So it's like, ah, like you want to give great service and there's a piece you don't know here. What kind of training could we bring in so that you are not asking people inappropriate questions, but also like feel like you've got the the knowledge to be able to give the great service that you want. Mm. So that's kind of how the whole project started. And it was meeting different like um, people who were also passionate in different departments and mapping that out for for staff. And once we did that, like people who came out kind of beta tested and tested 
the documentation and we made improvements just to make it easier for people. Oh, I love it. I love it. And so this, you know, obviously is a group of listeners who are people passionate. They love people, call the Improve It Peeps, love their people, care about the work that they do, the people within those systems and the people within those organizations. So if somebody listening today needed to hear, let's just say, three best practices to create similar policies in their workplace, what would you say those three best practices are? Putting you on the spot here, Tara, but if you could, if you had three things that you could do, if you could tell a listener today to do, what would they be? First, I would talk to the people on your people team, the benefits people, the people who are negotiating, like writing the the work contracts, all of those things. Um, their people partners, um, benefits I've mentioned, but all of those people have tremendous amount of subject matter expertise in their area. Like pull everyone together and be like, how let's do an audit. Like what are we doing for trans staff right now? Yeah. And just find like out, that. like be curious, ask, like, what are we doing? Um, and then without seeing a group of people be like, what can we be doing better? And maybe that might mean like a focus group or documenting what you're currently doing and asking the trans and non-binary staff at your work or looking at some of the, the best practice guides that are out there and measuring what you're doing against those. So like that audit piece, um, what I like about that is it looks at the systems and puts in place like things that are going to last and create kind of systemic inclusion. Yeah, I feel like... It goes back to what you were saying when you were like, you know, we need documentation, right? You need that documentation as a resource to go back to it. It's just with any type of thing that you you do a handshake on, you need that documentation there as a fallback process. And I love that the audit is also looking at every bit of that system that you're creating. Okay, keep going. Number two, number two. I surveyed uh, about 50 trans and non-binary people through um, just to find out like what what their experience of their best manager was and what they thought managers could do to make trans and non-binary inclusive environments on their teams. And one of the things that people said was, don't tokenize us. So mm. um, while well, I just said in the point one, kind of check with the trans and non-binary s- staff in your organization to see how well the policies are serving them. Some people might not want to talk about that. They mean they might be like, you know, I'm so and so in engineering. That is what I do. I'm not a professional trans and non-binary person here. Like, I don't really want to talk about this. Or if you're doing kind of like thinking about a marketing piece, and you look at so one person in the room, well, what do all transgender people think? It's like I don't know. Like, don't ask me to speak for a whole community. So that's something that I heard from people. And the last thing, like. Right now, in the U.S. especially, there's a lot of states where um, trans human rights are under attack. Um, There's a lot of different scary things happening. So if your company really is um, a company that's inclusive and celebrates trans and non-binary people, like corporate voices are really important. Speak up externally. Um, Speak up behind the different campaigns that are going on to say like, in our businesses, like we value uh, trans and non-binary staff and we value our trans and non-binary customers and just citizens. And this is the kind of community that we want to live in. And we don't tolerate um, attacks and transphobia and erosion of human rights. I love that so much. Okay, so I have audit. Number one, audit. Look at what we could be doing better. Look at your systems. See what's working, what's not working. Number two, Based off your awesome survey results, don't tokenize us. Don't allow us to have to speak for all of the community as as one person. And then number three, as an organization, speak up and speak up. Don't tolerate the attacks. And can I ask you a question about that? So for the speak up piece, do you think that's both internal communication and external communication? And within that, I've had this conversation a lot recently. How do you externally communicate without seeming performative? Mm, That's a great question. 
I think you need to do the work internally before you're taking an external stance on anything. So if you haven't looked and audited to see how inclusive your healthcare benefits are and are making bold public claims about what your company stands for, internally, people are going to be like, you're saying this externally, but we haven't done the work internally first. So do the work internally first. Um, I would then back existing campaigns that are out there where people have done a lot of that research and are savvy about the, the different lobbying of things that are happening and make it like it's not a flash in the pan for Pride Month. Like this is, these are your values year round and that you're going to speak up about them year round. Yeah, I love that. I love that. And I think it's, you can feel when that culture feels off and it feels so icky, especially if you're in that culture and then you see its actions be louder than words, right? So it's just such an interesting line that I feel like companies, organizations, big or small, walk when you see that communication being externalized when it's not felt from the people who are actually within the system. So I, I think that is so important. And let me ask you this too. So you've cre- so you created a lot of policies and documentation. Are there any wins that you can share from the policies you help create? And maybe you don't have to, maybe that you can't share names or anything or stories, but is there like a high level win that you could share? Someone privately told me, um, uh, someone in their early 20s, after they came out at work, they were like, one, like, I never imagined this would be my life. So similar to my, my like, as, as, as a teenager, I never could have imagined that I could be living this great life. Yeah. This person was like, I never imagined I could be my authentic self at work. Mm. And I can look and I can see two generations of possibility models of other out trans people. So it's not just me as like as someone in their early 20s. I see people who are in their 30s and 50s, like, and that possibility, like, I can grow old and there's different kind of exemplars of what excellence can look like. And that can be me. So mm. that really moved me. And like, I'm kind of moved with like what the next generation coming into the workplace is going to see like four generations of like out really badass trans people. Like, yes. 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 I know. I I love the um, Gen Z generation right now. I've got some of the, some of those, well, I've had some, you know, interns, things like that. And it's just, even working with them from a facilitation standpoint, they're a really great generation. I mean, there's there's differences for sure, but they're so caring. Most as a generation as a whole, I find that they are so inclusive and they and they want to see that change. They want to bring that change for everybody. And I love I love witnessing that because it just feels like the world I want to live in, you know? And we're right. Oof. We got we to gotta get there. <laughs> Come on, Gen Z. <laughs> Let's see you in office. Um, so. Oh, I thought of one other thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So th- this work benefits cisgender people too. Like, yeah. A cisgender man I worked with who came to some of these trainings and was an amazing partner reached out to me um, over social media like a year after I left the company to say, hey, I just wanted you to know that my kid just came out as non-binary. And this is my response. Like, I love you. Like, Mm. what are your pronouns? And I never thought that the work that we were doing in the workplace was also affecting my colleagues' kids in such a positive way. Mm. And I, like, I had a little cry. Like, that's amazing. And that kid had a really courageous conversation with their dad. And their dad's response is, I love you. Like, what pronouns are we using now? Like, right. I love that. Me too. I have a, a tear in the old retina right now because I'm like, that is, <laughs> that it is special. That and you and you know you you influenced a conversation that could have gone differently. So kudos to you. Kudos to you, Tara. Kudos to you. And kudos to the dad and the kid. Like, yes, yes, all uh, of it. So okay. 
if, let me ask you this. So if somebody is a leader, well, somebody, we got a lot of leaders in talent development leaders <laughs> on this, on this line. So if a listener today is having to handle a conversation where there is a commun- uh, an employee who is transitioning, what is one piece of advice you would tell that leader to do? Let me, let me ask this question. What's one thing that you would tell that leader to stop doing? And what's one thing that you would tell them to start doing? Ooh, that's a great question. There's so many like variables, like who is the leader? What is their knowledge? Like, what, right. If they're a people leader, they're already a great listener. But I would, I would coach them like whatever. Oh, I haven't had this conversation before. It's like, you've had lots of conversations that might be new or surprising for you. This is the first conversation that you've had when, where someone's coming out to you in the workplace and looking to you for support. Um, one, it means they trust you. Two, you might not know the specifics, but really hone that listening and listen to what the person is saying and what they're asking for. And use that active listening, like mirror back what you're hearing. So you make sure that what you're hearing is what they're, they're trying to communicate. So stop freaking out really excellent let's not start doing because you're already doing it but like really lean into those active listening skills and listen and then figure out what you need to do to support that person yeah it's so important i feel like that and it's so easy to forget listening right just making somebody feel seen heard valued and then taking action from there I love that. And I think it's so important. All these, everyone who listens to this show, I just feel honored because, and you probably feel honored too, because you get to work with all types of these people as well. People who care about their people. And it's a wonderful community of people who just want to do better and do right for the people that are within their organization. So easy, easy to say, easy to forget. Listen, right? It's just, it's such a, wonderful tool that makes people feel valued. And that's really what this is about is making a space where all people feel valued, where they belong and they don't have to question why they are there or they don't have to feel like an outlier. They feel like they are welcome no matter what. So let me ask you this, Tara, what is, we always say on the show, improve it. You know, you know improve it is the podcast, but your it is the thing that you bring to the world. What is Tara's it that you bring to the world? Oh, I think my it is like, it's a, I was like, is there a word where you can combine passion and boldness together? Like I have, I really, really care about more equitable workplaces and societies. Like I get really excited about that. And I also, as a coach, like, which is something I'm exploring more is like boldly seeing people's potential and really championing that even when they haven't quite seen it themselves yet. So I think that passionate and boldness together is something is, is one of my it's. I love that. What's your it? That's a hyphenated word. I love it. Bold and passionate. My it. And it's, I, you know, you don't, I'm, I can't do it in one word. It's to bring laughter, levity, and positivity to the world through play, laughter, and improv. Mm. That's it. It's it. And, and truly, it's, if I want, if I really were to narrow that down, it's just make people enjoy the work that they do by making it a safe space. And that's it. I also hear connection through that laughter. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, it's, I just earlier today recorded another episode about Im- improv and just the, the way it connects people. I just, wait, let me ask you this. Have you ever done improv? I can't believe I didn't ask you that. Not really. Not really. Like in a couple of like learning and development workshops, we've yeah. done improv exercises. Um, actually, two blocks from my house, an improv place just opened. And going by, I'm kind of intrigued and kind of scared, which... Saying that out loud means I think I have to go in. 
I think you have to go in. And I think you were a natural. Your your emails had me cackling the other day. So I feel like you got to just lean in, lean in, get comfy with that uncomfortable because you're a natural. I think you would crush it. So I love that. Do it. Do it. Do it. Mm-hmm. I also, woo! She, Tara's in. She's in. Okay. So let me ask you this. Now I'm sweating. <laughs> now you're sweating. Your armpits. It's you need to sweat. sweat. Strong antiperspirant. I know. I always tell people, I'm like, this is <laughs> perhaps going to make you feel icky sometimes, but like, that's the point. And then you get over it and then it's like a drug and you keep coming back and you're like, I want it that high again. So just lean into the sweat, sweat, your, get inspire. Don't perspire. There you go. I don't know. That's actually a name of a game we play. Anyway, Tara. Okay. Tell the Improve It peeps where they can find you if they want to connect. I know you're doing some coaching work. Tell them anything and everything that you want the Improve It peeps to know and where they can find you if they want to know more. Awesome. I would love it if you would follow me on LinkedIn. I'm Tara Robertson. I'm trying to post things about diversity, equity, and inclusion, um, some personal stories, and stuff about coaching. I try to post daily. Like, that's my, that's my goal. Someone's like, oh, you're a writer. And I was like, no, but I have a writing practice. You are a writer. <laughs> One day I'll claim that word. You should claim it because that's how I found you. I'm, I'm writing. I'm not sure if I am a writer, but. You're a content creator who writes. You're a writer. <laughs> You're a writer. You're a writer. People can also find me at my website, tararobertson.ca. Um, I'm going into coaching certification, which means I need to be coaching more. So if you are stuck anywhere in your work or personal life and thinking like, oh, like I would love an accountability partner and someone who sees the greatness in me to like do what I'm really here to do. Like reach out and let's see if we're a fit for each other. I love it. And I will link all of those things. We will link, I should say, good old Rachel, our podcast manager, will link all those things and the show notes. And Tara, I just, I think you're so awesome. I found you on LinkedIn writing. So you are a writer. And I also have to say, you are just a guiding light when it comes to creating supportive work culture. So I just want to say again, thank you so much for the work that you do. It does not go unnoticed and know that we see you creating change and moving us towards a better, more inclusive working world. So thank you so much for being here. This is so much fun. Thank you for inviting me. You're welcome. All right. Bye, Tara. (laughs) Tara, we're friends forever. Loved this conversation. And I'm so glad that we had it today. I want to recap those best practices that Tara shared with us about instituting policies in your workplace. So if you are listening and you want to create policies for transgender employees to feel safe, here they are. Number one, take an audit. Realize what could you be doing better. Look at the systems. See what's working. See what's not working. Number two, and this was based off survey results Tara had, Don't tokenize the transgender employees in your organization. And number three, speak up. Speak up behind all of the conversations that are happening. Don't tolerate attacks. And if you are an organization that hasn't instituted these policies before, do the work internally before taking a step to speak up externally. So, Within that, you have these three best practices. Here is your homework. You know, I like to give you a tangible takeaway. I want you to have a real conversation with other people leaders within your organization and ask, what are we doing to support transgender employees within our organization? Now, perhaps you don't have a transgender employee, but let's tell it, say this right now. The world is evolving and you are going to have a a time in your life where a transgender employee is going to work within your organization. So be better equipped. Check out the resources that Tara is giving us here today. Really allow yourself to be educated and really understand gender. 
I myself am so interested in learning all about this. It only makes you a better person. It only makes you a better leader. And it only allows for the people that work within your spaces to feel like they belong. Improve it, peeps. Thank you so much for listening to today's show. I hope you're walking away with some tangible tips. Pay it forward if today's show really spoke to you. Please send this episode to somebody in your organization who needs to hear it. Please pass it on to another people leader that you know. And if you're really feeling it, please leave a review and let us know what you like about the show and give us a five-star rating so we can bring on more guests like Tara. Thank you so much. You know what I'm going to say, keep failing, keep improving, because the world needs that special it that only you can bring. I'll see you next week. Hey, friends, thanks for tuning in to Improve It. I am so happy you were along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, head on over to iTunes to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show and you've improved it even just a little bit, please take a screenshot and tag me at Keeping It Real Deal on Instagram and share it in your stories. I'll see you next week, but I I want to leave you with this thought. What did you improve today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I am rooting for you and the world needs that special it that only you can bring. See you next time. <laughs>